It's okay. All I had to do was make an introduction for you. I just had to make an introduction for you. So can you tell the people what you're doing here, please? I'm doing an interview. I came here for the podcast. An interview or a technique video? Which one is it? Um, battery life. Half and half. Half and half, whatever you want. Okay, so we could talk about one thing that I like to do um, when I'm not uh, doing actual techniques or doing like like typical weightlifting stuff is stuff that should be typical but it's not. And that is um, that's posture. Posture. Yeah, I feel like in in a lot of a lot of wrestling books talk about first thing you should do with your wrestlers is you build upon their foundation of posture and if you are unaligned small amounts of load or muscular force uh, can make you very tired so having elite posture um, a lot of times can take place over techniques because they they have the foundation to keep getting better. Where some people, they start to develop their techniques more as uh, tactics, and there's not like a strategical um, you know, foundation. And like, you know, if you read The Art of War, uh, there's a famous quote that, uh, that uh, tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. And that's kind of what it's like when you build upon these moves that maybe your instructor thinks are kind of like outlandish or out there or you know and then maybe you see that as creative but it could be because there's a, a deep lacking of the underlying theme of posture so I, I think that you should start uh, with posture so I myself am trying to train my posture a lot right now the adjustment I would make is I would come here I'd sit in a technical lift position I'd put my fingers pointing behind me, my palm lined up with my knee, enough room in between my feet that I can karate chop. So when I switch sides, my feet, they don't, they don't touch each other. So little things like that will now go a long way. Go a long way. So now I start to think about putting my thoracic above my pelvic, my pelvic plane, and then I can start to bring my mandible out. Sometimes our heads down so much between the amount of time we spend on our phones, computers, and driving, and driving on our phones, mm -hmm. that we, <laughs> we start to uh, start to lose our posture starting at the C spine. <laughs> That's nice. That's a good Travis. Practice safe tapping at all times. You want me to be negative? Sure. You know him? Yeah. How? Mm -hmm. We used to walk to the bus together. <laughs> Very <laughs> true. No, I, I live in uh, Portland, Oregon. Mr. Pontas, party boy. Nice. Careful, little Nicole. Don't get too far on one side. Keep your base. Yeah, I'm flushing. 
All right, guys, let's line up. Pull the jacket to you, see? Pull the spine from here. Pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. Pull it. Yeah. Drive it to his hips and pull the jacket. Yeah. <laughs> at the same time. Because when he does the posture, he doesn't get it in time. What happens is, take on. Grab a neck. 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 Grab a neck.
Like how majestically I did that. <laughs> I like how you tried to be sneaky, but you were right in the frame. <laughs> Dude, this is like so technical and beautiful. Oh, yeah. What are you talking about exactly? <laughs> <laughs> talking straight narratives a lot of times in this and this is like half and half because I can't not talk about the life or where I got the music. so a podcast embedded with technique I love it it just I just feel like it's just kind of like rough so like it's fine go with the flow uh, the things I, I, I'm working on is I like to think like if I'm working from the negative position like if I'm working on like the bottom okay this is perfect so when we were hand fighting uh, like going like a your knees uh, when, when we yeah, that, that's that's fine you can do both or one wow. so when we were we were hand fighting I was tossing my legs out here and I was trying to uh, recreate the idea of you double legging me so like as you're crashing into me mm -hmm. I tried to make it like I like how I would be if I got speared okay so this is like I don't know, things I'm working on so I know that to get higher ground you can start to control the match okay so as you're colliding into me that's my key for momentum before the gravity starts to set on me so before too much loads on me like you can still feel that momentum i'm gonna start to elbow walk elbow walk and now i'm getting my legs out of the way okay and now i'm gonna try and step all the way over and come on to the positive position so that's the, one of the things that i was trying to do when i roll so like as we were hand fighting, I was giving, you know, what they call like kosus or offsets to stop the kazoo. Like, so kosus happen before a kazushi jiu jitsu is like a, a four part formula because you got like the, like the pulls, like the, the tear down, or like a push up. Like, these are the kosus. And then once I get you to like start to be offensive, so now I'm going to do the kazushi because I know I'm going to get crashed. So, what my crash is, is I elbow walk away and then I'm trying to kick my legs up and over oh and that's why you were doing that a lot so that's why i was doing that but you know you got you got really uh, retracted so as you started to retract your position like i was like well his base is freaking good so now i would not do that because i was like I was yeah like, i saw you try i was like i saw you were you're were <laughs> heavy and I, and I heard your experience so i was like you know i'm gonna i'm gonna really try to feel that crash i saw you working your stance and some shots earlier so i was like okay like i'll definitely drive in and now I switched my move. So now I started chew, getting my legs out of the way and I was trying to chew on one an arm. So then as you started to come here, then you were like kind of forced to, to uh, drive instead of retract. So that's when I was able to start coming and then trying to do it again. Yeah, that's when I retract back again. Right? Yeah, and that's when you step this knee back. Yeah. And now I came here, so I go take the bees. Once I'm in a negative position and I'm kind of solidified, so now you got higher ground, I go take Kubi. So I go for the wrist. And then if you drive forward again, I go Kubi neck. So I go take Kubi, Kubi. And now I'm going to start to again address more. So I'll keep going Kubi, grab the wrist. And you see, I kind of got like a almost like a, a an arm drag here, but I'm bending it kind of like the guy you can't do Grammy. And now, look, my elevator is coming here and I'm messing with this foot here. So now, as he pulls this arm back, pull this arm back, now I'm trying to come up to this foot. Does that make sense? So I'm trying to go kubi, kubi, kubis, because now 
even from here I can start to dry it and pass. So picking up the 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 cubies or the vertebrae in the in the bones yeah. as part of like my chinya, my bone locking attacks, that's how I'm trying to approach the negative position. Because you know like jujitsu they talk about it being pliable. Like you know how people say it's the gentle art. Like another way it has been said and is more descriptive, I think, because it's very uh, combat, very um, real, as in like, you know, you are dealing with very much real kinetic energy and static energy. So I feel like uh, uh, the more, uh, uh, the more that we can uh, uh, get into that, we can start to understand that jujitsu is not really gentle, it's pliable. Like it can be like really strong and it can be really tough. And like some sometimes it's elusive, like Grambies and like people like uh, like doing shucks. Like so, like if you were like to to call it a time, you, then they just kind of shuck it off. And now I'm using it to open up other you know sort of situations. You know, like you just you could start to be pliable in that way. And it's not really gentle, but it's like it could take a, you could take the energy and you know create. Or just surviving is creative. And I think that's what's cool about jujitsu is like, you're just trying to survive the first part of it. You're just trying to be hard to kill. You know what I mean? You're like, dude, I can't kill anybody. But like, at least I'll be hard to kill. Like, I want to be hard to, you know, tap out. And then I think through that survival, it's like a big struggle. And I think people who've been doing jujitsu about a decade plus, uh, definitely, you know, take that also decade of regular life into it, and it's very much a struggle. Like trying to like get out of like this Monsanto cookie cutter, you know, rat race to wrestle a few hours a week can you know financially uh, or emotionally, uh, whatever, uh, you know, start to offset like this you know, economic position that you're supposed to have in society. So it kind of like messes it up. But those people who stick with it, they struggle extra. And I think they get strong oh, with it. And uh, as you get more stronger than you do, the stronger you get. And the moves become strong. And I think there's pliability. Is what, like it's talking about that tetheredness, like that strength. So I think the more that people like do this stuff, like their lives become so strong. And like, you know, there's really good quotes of people talking about jujitsu. Like, you know, uh, if you're like for, if you're a female, you learn that you're, uh, you're uh, a lot stronger than you thought you were. And then a lot of people who have a lot of strength and, you know, uh, they were talking about the, the men in this situation. And they said men learn a lot of times that their strength they much as they mean as much as they thought it would. But, you know, I think it's true that, like, you just become stronger. And there's a strength in, like, getting injured and not being as strong as you used to be. Like, I'm not as strong as I used to be. Like, I've gotten, like, you know, lots of different injuries. And I've gotten stronger because that's pliable like that. Like, you, you got to be able to have... You got to have that. And then you got to, like... There will be people who attack will attack your character. And, like, you can't have people, like like, you know getting out of the competition hold the other competitors just trying to like get under you and just and you gotta be able to survive like little limelights like that if you try to like go into prize wrestling you gotta be able to survive that stuff and you gotta be uh, hard to kill you know what I mean and you survive that stuff you're gonna be strong and that's kind of like a, you know, what I like to do I like to go after the joints that are pliable because as like like if you're on your knees and I'm in bottom of the segment like like as we start to roll, a lot of times it takes forever in jujitsu to learn that this is wrong, and that this is wrong, and that this is wrong, and this is wrong, and I could touch here, and that could end up being wrong, and you know, like I could touch your face, and then you could start to like pin it like onto like the mat, and then I'm like, what? That was wrong? Like you don't really learn that that stuff's wrong, especially when we're wearing the jacket, and now there's even more stuff you gotta work. There's even more wrong things. Yeah. Now things are even more wrong. So what I what I'm doing uh, without the deck is I'm looking at the takeubis. Okay, so I go takeubi, kubi, ashikubi from any negative position. I mean, so like we're in we're in like bottom north south. Mm -hmm. Okay, look, my hand will come under here and it'll reach the takeubi. I'll push out kubi and now I'll start to come underneath and I'm working my ashikubis. 
Okay, so I'm working like manipulating the foot next. So these are. Yeah, just stuff that makes sense. You got two legs and two arms, and they're bigger and heavier here, and they're lighter here. <laughs> that just makes it even weird. weirder. Okay, so Please don't usually. Hit the mic. Okay, right, right, right. Okay, so usually jujitsu brings a lot of people together, but it's more interesting when you know someone from a long time ago and then you get back into touch with them and realize that they're doing the same martial art as you, right? And that's exactly what happened with us. Went to the same high school, lost touch. We used to them. walk. We used to walk to the bus together. Yes, we did. Used to walk to the bus together. <laughs> she was always so annoyed. <laughs> always so annoyed. So annoyed. <laughs> you still <laughs> like that? <laughs> <laughs> and I've been. York City and all of a sudden I get in touch with a friend from high school and he tells me you like jiu-jitsu so do I and guess who I learned from someone that went to high school with us and guess what he's going to New York City teaching the seminar next month you should go and catch up and go to the seminar which where is did exactly we go? What I did. it was the first one I went to for you was Master Skya yeah, or was it Sambo Steve? Sambo Steve. Sambo Steve then Master Skya Master Skya sure. and then we went to there was one more then there was the MMA, MMA Expo, Expo, and I watched you do the catch wrestling tournament. Yeah, and I did the catch wrestling tournament. And yeah, and the then you helped part. me. You helped coach me. Yes. Yeah, against Gabby. Oh yes. my God, she's so freaking good too. Hi, Gabby. Do you <laughs> do you remember uh, Anderson Silva being there? Yes, I do. So I had this poster, and like I was from I'm my kid from the desert, and I got to you know, like do the MMA World Expo, and I got to teach a workshop on catch wrestling, and it said like Anderson Silva, and it said my name. I was just like. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just didn't like, you say that? Didn't you take that poster and rip it down? I and did. You rolled it up and asked if I could put it in my car? I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and there was all these people taking selfies with Anderson in the background. And yes. John Jones was there too. Oh, yeah. that was a fun time. But it's crazy to see things go full circle. So uh, you've been, Jiu Jitsu has been doing wonders in your life. Yeah, for the most part. You I like mean, going to workshops and learning from oh, yeah, all yeah. sorts of people. Yeah, yeah. It's just Seminars, amazing. Seminars, workshops, whatever. So yeah. I do workshops. You went to one of my workshops. What did what did you learn? You taught me the heel hook. Mm. You did teach me heel hooks. Some hashi kubis. In an efficient way. That ankle locks and heel hooks. I still need a lot of work on ankle locks, but the heel hooks, I think. They're bigger bones. Okay, thank you for that. Yes. So, And the Americana. After you taught me that seminar on Americanas, especially for females, I started yanking. You're mean to those girls, dude. I've seen those things you do. They're mean to me, too.